Welcome everyone again to this uh, retreat and uh, the, the third talk in, uh, during this weekend. Before we get started with the content, as usual, I'll just like to remind you of a couple of technical items. Uh, if you have any questions um, about the content or otherwise, you can ask them in the questions box here on Zoom and we'll try to answer them towards the end of the session. And if you have any technical problems, you know where to reach me, you can go to the chat box, look for my name, and I can help you solve them. That's it uh, on my end. Uh, over to you, Father John. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, we come before you once again together as a group, though separated by distance and many miles, we are united in our hearts that are uh, gathering in your name and seeking your consolation and seeking your voice in our lives. We ask you to dispose our hearts and minds to be receptive to your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, so welcome back, everyone. Uh, I hope you're Retreat thus far has been has been well. Uh, it's about three in the afternoon Eastern time, um, and uh, this morning we looked at a few things. We looked at God's own desire to give us new hearts, as expressed in the Book of Ezekiel. We looked at that uh, very interesting quotation from Saint Theophan the Recluse about how do we understand ordering our interior life, our actions and our hearts and our minds, and how that overlapped with St. Ignatius of Loyola's own description of discernment of spirits, and consolation and desolation, and what to do about them. And we looked at the principle and foundation, which is the reason God has made us. He has made us for himself, um, and he's made us for praise and reverence and service. And then uh, you were invited to make a review of life or an examine of however long you would like, uh, guided by Hosea chapter 11 and also Psalm 51. And I don't know if some of you also saw the links to, actually there were two different Aramaic songs or hymns that were based on Psalm 51. Uh, that were in the in the playlist, and uh, very evocative, very powerful Psalm 51s, uh, sung in the language and the the oldest language we have, the language that Jesus Himself spoke. And I hope you also may have found the Litany of Trust and and prayed it. The Litany of Trust is an antidote to fear and to doubt. It's uh, just a a way in which we, we declare before the Lord that we do actually trust in his care and in his power. And uh, I'd like to also maybe point attention to the song name, uh, called Doubt at this time. This is a, a song by Beck O'Brien, and it's a beautiful song that is from the perspective of Peter, who's in the boat and they're seeing Jesus walking on the water. It's from the perspective of Peter, who's always grappling with his doubts. You know, he's struggling with the fact that he has great desires, holy desires, but he's so often failing um, to live up to, to, to his well, relationship and trust in, in Jesus. So Peter's being invited to get out of the boat. And later on, he's at Calvary as well. He's at, at the passion and struggling with his denial of Jesus. So uh, even though I didn't cite this gospel passage in the handout, I'd like to propose it now uh, for those of you who think that they would identify with Peter. And the, um, the scriptural passage for this is Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Maybe someone can throw that in the chat uh, right now, but it's Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 33. This is the Lord walking on the water. And this would be a very good passage to pray with as well uh, this afternoon. And I invite you to listen to the song, Doubt. And if, if sometimes it's helpful to follow along the lyrics of a, of a song too, to, 
to get what's being sung. And in the um, on that YouTube link up for the song in the notes, there is the lyrics have been placed if you wanted to follow along with those. And then to pray it as has been proposed to just read over the gospel passage several times um, and pray for the grace of, uh, of trust and trust in the Lord. Okay. The, um, the uh, well, I'll just do a share screen here at this point. Uh, this is what we have for Saturday afternoon. And it's a section of the retreat called the Passion of God. And as you can see, I have listed a few other passages to choose from today. And I'll just say, you're, again, you're not to pray all of these. I just don't think there's time. But I've said, choose as many prayer periods as you would like to make this afternoon. I'm, I'm not going to give any more prayer periods today. So the, the, you can be choosing these for the rest of today um, until we meet uh, again tomorrow morning. Although we'll be meeting once more today at, at um, 7 p.m. for the Liturgy of the Word. But you can see four, op four proposed options. The first is the raising of Lazarus. And then you have three from the Passion, the Last Supper, Gethsemane, and the Lord's Crucifixion. So just a word about each of those. On the raising of Lazarus, um, well, first of all, on the page, it says John chapter 11, 1 to 14 on, in your handbook. I've just corrected that to go to verse 45. So John chapter 11, 1 to 45. It's a, it's a longer scene, longer than we normally do. But uh, there's a lot in it and a lot that may leap out at you. I will just highlight in this, in this uh, long scene, verse 5 says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Just invite you to put your name and the names of anyone else in place of those names. Well, maybe there's something on your heart right now, people in your life. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's the... Uh, the students from the residential schools who died, you know, that are that are um, featuring prominently in the national in the national headlines right now, and this is maybe an invitation to some of the weeping and some of the um, grief that we can we can share in terms of historical memory. And just remember that that uh, Jesus loved, and you can imagine all the names of those. Uh, children who died over the decades uh, at those at that school and at other schools, especially if that's something that's uh, um, disturbing you. It's as it is disturbing a lot of people at the moment. Maybe there's issues closer to home, you know, in your family, uh, in your relationships with somebody. Uh, maybe there's someone close to you who's hurting badly, or suffering from discouragement, suffering from depression, suffering from uh, physical ailment, okay, or someone who's estranged, someone who's uh, estranged from family, estranged from faith, whoever those persons are. Uh, when it says Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, um, they represent humanity for us in this moment. And so the scene is also revealing, again, something of the heart of Jesus. And uh, yeah, I just um, will also add uh, verse, verse 35, maybe something to think about as well. Verse 35 is Jesus wept. It's considered the shortest verse in the gospels. Two words, again, the heart of God is revealed in Jesus. And then maybe the last verse is verse 44, unbind him and let him go. This is a prayer that can be made um, ourselves. We can hear the words of Jesus echo in our mind, uh, in our own hearts, in our own souls, that we too be unbound from whatever is binding us, whatever is holding us down. 
So all of these passages, they're, they're revealing, they're revelatory of the heart of God. Um, just like the images of the sacred heart show it, so do these scriptures show what God's heart and soul consists of. Okay, in addition to the raising of Lazarus, we have the Last Supper, Gethsemane, crucifixion. Again, you choose how many and which one or ones you would like to meditate on and dedicate, you know, we've said maybe 40 to 60 minutes. If you're going to go with the Last Supper, uh, I'll just point your attention to one of the pieces of music is called Mandatum for this, this late afternoon and evening, mandatum. And the mandatum is the mandate that Jesus gave at the Last Supper to his disciples after he washed their feet and said, what I've done to you, you two go and do likewise. So that particular hymn would be a beautiful prelude that can be prayerfully listened to before you dive into the scripture. With Gethsemane, I, I would just encourage you to notice how Jesus desires the company of his followers and friends this too reveals something of the heart of God. And if you meditate on the crucifixion scene, notice who is at the base of the cross. Who is there? In, in what way does, does their presence console Jesus? And what happens with them? What happens to them? Okay. A few words about the wounds of Christ. A lot of the saints have been drawn in their mystical lives to the mystery of the wounds. And why do we call it a mystery? Well, it, everything in the Gospels is a mystery, not in the sense that it's something we don't understand mystery, but something that is continuously revealing new aspects of itself. There's a dynamic and, and uh, polyvalent nature to the events in the life of Christ which is why contemplative people can pray with the same scripture for 60 years and still get new things out of it, right? They are living. Um, so what is it about the wounds? Well, they're a little mysterious because they're, they're foreshadowed in the Old Testament, especially in Isaiah about the Son of Man um, and all the wounds that he, he will have. Um, that he was not someone that was beautiful to look at in this state and that uh, not a bone of his body was broken but um, he was uh, bruised for our offenses and then you have the crucifixion then you have the resurrection later in which the wounds are still there so there's something about the wounds of jesus that are revealing to us saint anselm early saint said, what sweetness is in his pierced side? What wound has given us a glimpse of the treasure house of his goodness? That is to say, the love of his heart for us. Okay. Saint Anselm. Other saints might be like Saint Francis of Assisi, you know, this great medieval mystic who says um, he wanted to know Christ so well and to share in his passion even, that he literally received the wounds of Christ himself. This is the whole tradition of uh, stigmata. He, he gets the wounds in his hands, feet, and side. They appear on him. And then there is the wound in Christ's side, you know, this particular wound from the spear. And in a sense, this is seen as a mystical gateway to his heart or to the heart of God and the love that is there for us all. It's the gateway through which we receive salvation as well, right there on Calvary. And for that reason, it's been called the well of everlasting life. So the, the wounds of Christ, all of them, but in particular that wound in his side, are also like, they're like wells or doors or gateways of life and salvation. And if I can push it even a bit further, the wounds of the heart are a place of prayer. Um, at the very end of the handbook, you're going to see this prayer from St. Ignatius called uh, the anima Christi, or the soul of Christ. And one of the lines in there is, within your wounds, hide me. <laughs> it's an incredibly visual, visceral prayer uh, statement to make. What does that mean, to be hidden in the wounds of Jesus? Well, it's obviously, in a, in a spiritual way, 
we identify our own wounds. How do we do that? Well, through examine and prayer and meditation. When we pay attention and understand and take whatever action is needed about our own wounds, um, we can turn to the, we find ourselves turning to the wounds of Christ, of Jesus. And it's his wounds that are the means of our salvation, of our redemption. You know? There's these other saints, Teresa of Avila, Catherine of Siena, uh, Julian of Norwich. They've all recognized in the wounds of Christ a place to be hidden, a place to be uh, relieved. They say the wounds of Christ, they're like havens in which sinners can take refuge. And of course, they're also the source of cleansing and feeding the water and the blood that pour forth in a Eucharistic manner. So in whatever way you have become conscious of your own wounds, um, this is a good time to turn to a contemplation of the, of the wounds of Jesus, perhaps by going directly to that image of the Sacred Heart. If you look once more at your handout on on the next page, you will see an image of the Sacred Heart that's sort of a semi-Byzantine or neo-Byzantine portrayal of Jesus. Um, I like this one because his expression is a bit, uh, well, there's something luminous about his face. And um, his expression is, well, it's a little bit enigmatic. It's, you can kind of see a lot of different things in that face, a little bit like the Mona Lisa. Uh, is he, he's perhaps stern at times, perhaps he's smiling. Other people see love just emanating from that face. Um, there's maybe a small smile there, but there's also a tremendous dignity about this Jesus, a great human dignity about him that I just love. And as you scroll down, you'll see a depiction of the heart, uh, the, the heart of Jesus. And on the next page, I'd like to invite you to, all, to do a meditation with the image of the sacred heart. And this is to look element by element, um, the thorns, the cross, the wound, the fire that's blazing. And in this particular meditation or prayer, there is a five step uh, image by image, element by element meditation that's been prepared by uh, Father James Kubicki, um, SJ. So that could be a separate prayer period for you, uh, if you wish, that would just complement your meditations on, on the, scriptural, the scriptural passages. And then finally, I would invite you at some point today to make a meditation on the, uh, well, it's not so much a meditation as a recitation of the litany of the sacred heart. And in fact, I'm going to propose that we do that together although you can also pray it yourself. So uh, we're going to be meeting again in about an hour and 15 minutes. So I don't wanna prolong this talk terribly long. So I think I'm gonna conclude with this prayer that we can make together. So I'll lead, the, I'll lead the litany and wherever you are, you can just respond on, on uh, page nine of your retreat handbook, you'll see the litany. Uh, if you don't have it in front of you right now, that's okay. The response is pretty much have mercy on us. Each of these titles, heart of Jesus, you know, house of God and gate of heaven have a, a theological meaning as well. And uh, I haven't provided it here, but it is possible to find online or also, I'm just gonna make a little book plug at this point. I don't know if you can see this. This is a book by, a Je by the same, Je same Jesuit. Sorry, I'll just try and tilt this better. There we go. Uh, it's called <laughs> A Heart on Fire. I don't know why this isn't focusing very well here. Uh, uh, there we go. And Someone's going to put a link in there. Okay. It's by Father James Kubicki, SJ, A Heart on Fire. Um, oh, it's because my background's on haze. Yeah, that's right. There we go. I'll keep it more there. <laughs> okay. Um, a Heart on Fire by Father James Kubicki, and it's uh, rediscovering devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And what he's done there is for every 
title in that litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, he has provided uh, uh, um, a theological explanation for it. So thanks everyone for putting those links there. Wonderful. So in the meantime, we'll just pray it and uh, allow it to unfold. So let us pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our Father in heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Sorry for the delay, I'll just continue. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, one with the Eternal Word, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, infinite in majesty, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, holy temple of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, a flame with love for us, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of justice and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, wellspring of all virtue, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, worthy of all praise, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, King and center of all hearts, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, treasure house of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom there dwells the fullness of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father is well pleased, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, from whose fullness we have all received, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and full of mercy, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, generous to all who turn to you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, atonement for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, overwhelmed with insults, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, broken for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, obedient even to death, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced by a lance, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of all who trust in you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of all who die in you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. And Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, make our hearts like your own. So let us pray. Father, we rejoice in the gifts of love that we have received from the heart of Jesus, your son. Open our hearts to share his life and continue to bless us with his love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So if there are any questions, we can take those now. Let's just give people a couple of minutes in case they haven't written them down. So if you have any questions, you can enter them using the uh, questions button and the questions box that pops to the so. Yeah, um, while you're while you're thinking, just a um, uh, just a uh, overview again is because there's a lot. There was a lot that was given just now. Um, there's a number of scripture passages you can pray with, including Jesus walking on the water to Peter, include including the raising of Lazarus, including um, the Last Supper, Gethsemane, and the crucifixion. You don't have to do all of them. You're welcome to pick one or two or three or however many you think you can do. There was also a proposed meditation on the heart, on the sacred heart itself, praying with an image, and then um, the litany, uh, the sacred heart litany we just did. So this is for this afternoon and this is for tonight um, and even tomorrow morning because our first, our first uh, meeting tomorrow is not till 10 a.m. Eastern time. So there's, uh, there's quite a bit there that you can pray with. Um, yeah. All right, so we got a couple of questions. The first one is from Justin, it's more practical and it's about the next meeting time, which yeah. would be 7 p.m. Uh, for the uh, Liturgy of the Award for the Feast of Corpus Christi. So it's 7 p.m. Eastern time, not in an hour. Yeah, I beg your pardon. I, I made a mistake about that time. I'm trying to juggle time zones in my head for all these conferences. Uh, so thanks, Justin. Yeah, we're, we're not meeting till 7 p.m. Eastern time, which is 5 p.m. my time, which is 4 p.m. for those of you in BC right now. And that's for a liturgy of the word for the feast of Corp for the Sunday liturgy for the feast of Corpus Christi. And then we have a bit more of a content related question. What is the name of the Saint Tat? I, oh, the Saint, yes, yeah. Uh, what sweetness is in his pierced side? Also, the link for the Zoom call and not the downloads. So sorry. Um, the second question, so you can use the exact same link you have received via email to join all of the sessions. Um, you will receive a reminder tomorrow morning for tomorrow, but you can use the same link for tonight, the one you got this morning. And yeah, and so the saint was Saint Anselm, uh, it was Saint Anselm who said that, but I mean, honestly, if you, uh, well, if you get the book, uh, uh, a heart on fire. Uh, it's peppered with quotes from saints that have to do with the the mystery of the wounds of, of Jesus. And um, uh, I would also say that. Um, uh, sorry, what was the other thing? Oh, oh what sweetness is in his pure yeah. side? Yeah, well, that was that was Saint Anselm who said that. But uh, I also referred to things that Saint Catherine of Siena and Julian of Norwich have said as well about the wounds of Christ. Yeah. And the reason that there's no, like the reason Jose is not putting the, the link to the future webinar calls in, is because the link is a bit different for each person. Is that right, uh, Jose? There's no yeah, one so gen general link, so. Exactly, each of you receives a unique link so that uh, we know who's who when you join and we can answer questions and so on. So you just have to follow the link that's in your in your inbox that was emailed to you. Right? Yeah. If any of you wants that to be resent to you, uh, like I said, you'll get a reminder tomorrow morning. Uh, but if you want uh, today's link to be resent, just let me know and I'll do that. Okay. And Marisol, we did email you the PDF. If the PDF is for the for the retreat handbook, if that's the one you're referring to, um, but uh, there is a link, there is a general link for that. Yeah, thanks, Jose, there it goes. That's actually not the right link. So oh, okay. um, and then the, another question we got from uh, Gina. So Ronald Knox wrote, it was a sacred heart that burnt with anger when the traitors were written out of the temple. Is Jesus' sense of justice connected to his heart in most Catholic writings? Mm. Hi, Gina. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. His heart burns with like 
love and sorrow is in the case of like Martha and Mary and Lazarus, but we, we also see it um, erupting in righteous indignation. That phrase sometimes has a negative connotation. He's got righteous indignation or, but when you, when you parse it out, it actually is a good thing. It's, it's actually um, part of our read on Jesus is that he has a strong sense of justice that, that he inherits from the Old Testament too. God's and, and represents God's own sense of justice, especially injustice against things like the widows and the orphans are often are often held up as examples in ancient Jew Jewish society of um, people who are vulnerable. And um, so absolutely, I would just say absolutely, it's a heart that uh, yearns for for justice. And I think that was the last question for now. Uh, just before we finish, uh, a reminder that uh, you can use, like I said, the exact same link for all of the uh, sessions. And then the second one is that we'll continue to send uh, the recordings for each of the talks. Um, you should get them within the hour after uh, each of the talks ends. So by, by 4.30 at the latest, it takes a little while for YouTube to process the recordings. So. And that's it uh, on my end. Okay, well, God bless your prayer, everyone. And, and we'll see you for the liturgy at 7 p.m. Eastern time.